Rub up your engines! Lately, I've seen so many people being ripped off by repair shops that I'm going to show you some really common ripoffs and how you can avoid them. Now, one of the most common ripoffs is telling you you need struts or shocks in your car. Now, sure, they wear out over time, but they have to be pretty far gone for you to actually need new ones, and guys are always trying to sell you them. You start with a lightweight car like this Matrix, they don't weigh much, so they can last a really really long time. This is an 07. Still got the original ones on. Now they do wear out, but here's how you can figure it out yourself. The strut mounts are on the top. The strut mount holds the strut together, bolts onto the frame of the car there. This rubber isn't ripped, and when we push it up and down, you can see the rubber isn't wiggling up and down. If it was broken, yeah then you'd see the rubble move and you'd have to replace at least the mount. And here's a simple test that you can check from the bottom. You just get a jack. Now as you jack it up, if you see these falling down, it means they're broken that way. But as you can see, we're jacking it up in the air. The wheels are now off the ground, broken off and fallen in. No, they're still solid. That one and that one. And as we go to the other side, well, check this one out. Check it out. It's bone dry too. Now, this car's so old, you can see the dust shield here has ripped and fallen off. It's coming apart. It's just a dust shield. And as you can well imagine, it really doesn't do much of anything because this one's been ripped for over six years and the dust hasn't got in and ruined the seal so it's leaking, so it's not leaking. Now, the reason that I didn't put another dust shield on is this. I would have to take the entire assembly off. I would have to take the strut mount and the spring off, put a new dust shield on, put it back together again, which I am not going to do for something as stupid as a dust shield. Now, on the other hand, if I was doing a strut job, I saw this is ripped, I would buy a strut and I would buy a dust shield rubber boot that goes over the top. Now it's not a perfect seal anyways, it just sits there so it's not all that important. But if you're going to do the job, you might as well do it right. It doesn't need struts, so I'm not going to do it. But eventually, when they do wear out and start leaking, yeah, I'll get a new strut and I will get a new rubber boot to keep the dust off. Now one of the main reasons I'm showing you how to check it is because of this. A crooked mechanic can have a little bit of spray oil. He can spray oil on here and then say, oh look, look, it's leaking, it's leaking. Well, before you go to any garage, just take a picture of the struts, right? And you see they're dry. Then if they say, look, they're leaking and they show you they're wet, they're crooks who sprayed it on. Don't deal with them and report them to the Better Business Bureau. I've seen people do this for ages and ages. So just check it yourself. It's so easy to do. Now this car rides fine, so I know there's nothing wrong with the struts, right? If you have a really, really old car and it's worn, it'll bounce up and down, it'll bounce up and down, then you know the struts are worn. You could push on the car, it'll bounce up and down. This doesn't bounce at all, there's nothing wrong with them, right? But today's cars, the more modern ones, they might not necessarily bounce up and down all that much, but this is what will happen when they're actually warm. Driving down the road and the steering wheel will be fine, so they ain't going 50, 60 miles an hour. But then when you hit bumps, It'll start shaking and rattling, and when you get to a smooth road, it'll smooth out again. That's a dynamic test you can do yourself, but you always do have to also make sure that your car is structurally sound, because it may not be the struts if it does that at high speeds and starts bouncing around. It can be something in the front end, so you can always do this test. Three and nine o'clock, pull on it. If it wobbles, you probably got a bad tie rod. And then, 12 o'clock and six o'clock. If you pull on it, could be a ball joint or something's worn. But if it's straight like this and it's not wobbling at all and you do start to lose control when you hit bumps on the highway, you're going to need new struts. Now. And also look at your tires. These are evenly worn. There's the same wear the whole way across. If it's all cupped on one side or the other, that could mean that your struts are wearing out too. You notice this little dot here? Okay, that's a tire plug. I put it on over six years ago. Now another item that's really oversold is brake pads and brake rotors. People tell you you need a brake job. Way more than you often do. It's so simple. And for this I'm using this cool little new air compressor I got. It's small and it's oil free, but we're going to see how it works because it does have two cylinders. So it can pump pretty fast. So I'll take off the tire and talk about brakes here. 
We'll just pull off the wheel and tell that little compressor works. So far so good. Yeah, it worked so good it didn't even have to turn itself on. That little air tank was enough to take off the wheel. I gotta say, it's a little tank, but it took off one wheel without even running itself. Guys are forever trying to sell brake jobs. If your brake pedal does not sink, if it's nice and hard, and when you're on the highway going, say, 65, 70, and you hit the brake hard, the steering wheel doesn't shake, and you look at the brake pads, and they're still pretty thick, right? If they get thinner than, like, a dime, yeah, it's time to change them. But even then, it can still go... 8, 10,000 miles or more, but you might as well change the map. But it doesn't shake at high speeds, and when you look at the rotors, they look fine like this. They always get superficial rust, but up north, a lot of times you'll see the inside will be all rotten away from the salt on the road. If it is all rotten away, yeah, you want to change the rotors. But if they're solid and they don't shake on the highway, you don't need pads. You don't need anything. People are forever trying to sell you stuff to say, oh look, your brakes are making noise. A lot of brakes will squeal every now and then. And if you look at them and they're still thick, they're not leaking, they work fine, you can just ignore it. Now these don't squeak at all because I use those Acabono pads. I like the Acabono pads. They don't make any noise at all. But let's say your car looked like this and it squeaked and it drove you nuts. You could just replace your brake pads with the Acabono, A-K-E-B-O-N-O. Japanese made pads and then they won't make any noise if the noise bothers you That's why if you care about noise buy quality brake pads that are quieter Acabona ceramics are extremely quiet. They don't make any noise now If you don't care about noise you go to AutoZone you can buy their cheapest pads Actually, they're often harder and they will actually last longer The only thing is they're so hard they make a lot of noise a lot of people don't like noise But if you're the type of person you don't care about noise you turn the radio up You can go buy the $19 pads at AutoZone. They'll work perfectly fine. It's just that that they'll probably make a lot of noise that drives most people crazy. So don't be sold a lot of crap because somebody's trying to make money off you. And of course, another thing related to this is guys are always trying to sell you front end alignments. This Matrix has never had a front end alignment. It's an 07. The tires wear evenly. It goes down the highway straight. It doesn't pull one way or another. It's not something you really need all that often. Your tires are unevenly wear. This is evenly worn. They're old tires, but they still got tread left on them. If it's all worn out unevenly, yeah, you probably need an alignment. If you're driving down the road and the car pulls to one side or the other now realize streets drain and whatever way they drain your car's going to go a little bit that way like if they drain to the right you let go of the wheel it'll go a little bit to the right if it drains to the left it'll go a little bit way to the left but if you're going down a flat road and it pulls one way or another you're going to need an alignment in most cases you know unless you got a flat tire it's going to pull to that side or you got a problem in the front end and i already showed you how to check that to see if it's got play if you have no play when you jack it up it doesn't pull the tires are wearing even you do not need a front end alignment and guys are just going to try to sell you that all the time that's a game that mechanics play now i'm going to put the tire back on but here's another reason you want to learn how to do stuff yourself because a lot of guys will use one of these impact wrenches <laughs> to put it back on all right, it's fine to take it off. You're just taking it off. But if you use something like that that puts out as much as 1,000 foot-pounds of torque, you can end up warping the rotor, wearing and bearing inside and everything. So what you want to do is you want to get a torque wrench. And in this case, 77 foot-pounds or so. Then we'll carefully put the wheel back on so we don't warp anything. You line them up. And then first, you just want to put some on finger tight. Now that's on finger tight, we'll put the jack down with the emergency brake on and we will tighten them until they click. Okay, that one's done. And you do a cross ball pattern. One side then cross to the other. And back over to the other side. And then down to the last one. And there's another trick. If you got nice wheels like this with these center hubs, get a little silicone clear sealer. On the little lips you can see where it sits on. Put a little clear silicone sealer on a few of these lips because then it won't fall off later on. If you hit a big bump, they get old, they can get a little bit touchy. So when you snap them on, line them up like this. Now it's snapped in place and it won't fall off. Now I'm going to switch gears and warn you about a maintenance item that 
they tell you you don't need anymore and that is well your transmission has lifetime fluids in it you don't need to change it ever now sure transmission oil doesn't get as dirty as engine oil because engine oil is in the engine it's burning gasoline impurities get it and you got to change it every 5,000 miles or so if you use pure synthetic oil but transmission fluid will eventually get dirty dirt is friction it will wear your transmission out so why do they say it's a lifetime fluid well they mean that the fluid is good for the lifetime of the transmission but of course ask them what the warranty of the transmission probably 50 60 thousand miles right i mean my old celica's in 94 it's got 240,000 miles on it it still shifts fine because i change the fluid every 30 40,000 miles the dealerships would just love it if your transmission went out after the warranty period was over then they could sell you thousands and thousands of dollars of work or a remanufactured transmission for thousands and thousands of dollars or say oh yeah just buy another car you need another car right planned obsolescence at its best now the old-fashioned transmission is like in this matrix so really easy. drain the plug you could drop the pan and clean it if you wanted but you could change the drain plug and then you just add the fluid and a dipstick hole so that closes the case on how not to get ripped off by dishonest shops hey they've got overhead they've got to pay insurance they have to mint money in order to keep themselves going and make a hefty profit. Guys are always trying them. They will probably continue ad infinitum trying to rip people off. And I do have to say, <laughs> so far I'm pretty impressed. Let's run this impact a little while to see how long it'll run before it starts pumping again. <laughs> Okay, there it goes. And really, for an air compressor, that's pretty quiet. And the design is all made out of plastic, which of course is a lot quieter than metal. The only thing I'm worried about is, will it hold up over time? So I'm gonna use the heck out of this thing, see how long it lasts. Now we'll wait till it shuts off. And it shut off, there it goes. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.